Simon Iraq, five years later. In 2004, we were the only local station to send a reporter to the war zone. Tonight, we've done it again. KXOY4's Dave Erickson has traveled with our local National Guard members to Joint Base Balad. That's north of Baghdad. He joins us live there. And Dave, you've been there a little over a week now. How are things going? Well, things are going pretty good. Troop morale is good. Uh, the guys are anxious to get uh, out and doing some missions. It was last night that we showed you preparations for the 161 as they went on their guns only run. Uh, the planning, the mindset, the expectations, what they can expect outside the perimeter of Joint Base Balad, a non escorted mission. Uh, now is the moment of the truth as they head outside the wire. Even though today's mission is a guns only run, meaning they're armed but not providing escort service, the 161st still receives intelligence reports on road conditions along their route over the past 12 hours. Route conditions fall under four categories, green as the lowest, followed by amber, defined as normal trafficability, red, which means there has been an incident and travel is limited to essential needs, and black, no travel allowed except for emergencies. On this day, the route fell under amber. Each vehicle is assigned specific responsibilities based on position. The lead vehicle or scout calls out everything from kids along the roadway, manned or unmanned Iraqi checkpoints, and vehicles going northbound in the southbound lane. Every element is considered a threat. Even though 95% of the improvised explosive devices are placed at night, nothing is overlooked during the day. Debris, dead animals, even potholes can be hiding places. After arriving to the set firing range, the squad gets right to work. Shot many times before, but basically we're coming out here, spending a few rounds downrange, uh, getting some good training in on the uh, 50 cal machine gun, as well as uh, the 240 Bravo. Every 35 to 45 days, the 161 does some target shooting. They go about two hours outside the wire, outside the barrier of Joint Base Balad, to get in some practice shooting. They'll be out here for about an hour and a half to two hours. The vibrations alone are enough to rattle your teeth, and that's part of the thrill for Specialist Stephen Ingram. It's it's a huge adrenaline rush, that's for sure. It's just, especially with these ones, the automatic ones, shooting a semi doesn't doesn't even come close. It's just a great freaking time. Coming out here, just blasting away for a little while, it, it's a good stress reliever too, that's for sure. They fire hundreds of rounds under the close eye of Staff Sergeant Jones. Well, this is a nice open area. There's no populace out here. It's a good place, safe place to shoot. And like most veterans, Jones is fine with standing back and letting his team work on their skills. I'm, I'm proficient on all the guns, so I just let these guys shoot up the bullets. You don't miss it? I'm missing years. <laughs> Well, something you probably saw interesting in the end of the video in the background was some Iraqi civilians. Um, they were standing back there to pick up the brass casings from the 50, cal 50 caliber machine guns and the 240 Bravo. They take these casings because we leave them left over and they melt them down and then they sell them or turn them into something else that they can sell. So that's something that the Iraqis will pick up after we leave. Reporting with the Spokane members of the Washington National Guard's 161st Infantry at Joint Base Balad in Iraq, Dave Erickson, KXLY4, HD News.